We look at the four uh, emotions which result into unpleasantness or which result into uh, lack of energy. If we look at fearfulness or all four, these when they happened, when they became part of human self, these emotions had some purpose. These are not useless emotions. But when we overplay on these, when these become more prominent in the personality, that result into emotional distress. So, evolutionarily speaking, we have to have concern about what is happening in the environment, we need to be, ha we need to be alert about it, that was the function. But when this alertness became excessive, when this concern became excessive, it becomes fearfulness and that fearfulness becomes dysfunctional. Excessive attachment with the outcome, we all are goal directed beings. We all have to achieve something in life, we work best when we have some objective in life. But when we are too attached to the outcome of the activity, we are think much more about the outcome rather than uh, enjoying the process and remaining connected with the process, uh, that is that state is called anxiety. Anxiety meaning we are too attached and want to look at the outcome of effort more immediately, earlier than a process can happen and process can allow the outcome to uh, appear front of us. Similarly, uh, we could find family or community because they were able to trust each other, they were able to develop that complementary relationship with each other. When this trust became excessive and result into dependence, it becomes cause of emotional distress, that is another form of emotionality. Similarly, we were able to live in a family or community because we build relationship, we have sense of attachment with each other, that is how friendships appear, that is how relationship are built. But when we are too attached to some people, certain things, certain situations, certain places, that too much of attachment makes us sentimental about those. And too much attachment becomes sentiment, makes us sentimental, too much aversion also becomes sentimental. So, we can see that there are some rudimentary emotions which are important, but when these are overplayed, when they become much more than what is required to remain functional, they take the shape of emotional distress, fearfulness, anxiety, sentimentality, dependence are those kind of emotions how you can help in managing these emotions, managing negative emotions. There are different ways of managing these emotions. Some of the examples we are going to look at, one is exposure therapy. Exposure therapy is prominently useful in anxiety and to some extent sentimentality. What we do in the exposure th uh, therapy, we make the list of situation which trigger anxiety. Then we need not to worry about the level of anxiety when we are preparing the list, but we need to continue to work on that list and give the hierarchy. Look at what you wrote and organize them and ones that gives you less anxiety to the ones that are the larger source of anxiety. So, there are some thing which give you more anxiety than others, you look at, uh, you start addressing things which give lesser anxiety. So, you can be little relaxed about those things. Then you think about the worst scenario, uh, look at your new organized list, take the moment to think about what could be the worst thing you would have faced in those situations, why is that worst, how likely it is to happen, what could you do, could you do to prevent it, what is the best way to deal with it, if it really happens. 
and try to answer these questions. In that process, we become more cognitive, we become more aware of the situation and then we can start working on these items one by one. That is the exposure therapy, that is very useful in managing anxiety. There are methods which can be helpful to uh, for the grounding and centering and these are useful for managing, managing sentimentality as well as managing dependence. What do we do in that? What are the five things you can see? That is the way to distract ourselves, that is the way to take away our excessive emotional investment in one situation to another. What are the four things you can feel? What are the three things you can hear? What are the two things you can smell? What is one thing you can taste? By uh, this technique called 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 technique, you can purposefully take in the details of your surrounding using each of your senses and strive to notice small details that your mind would usually tune out such as distant sound or a texture of the ordinary object. When we do that, our mind is taken away, our thoughts and emotions are taken away from the things which makes us anxious, which makes us sentimental, which makes us are uh, dependent on something and that creates a self space. In order to decrease the dependence, when the basic uh, and particularly sentimentality, the uh, one method is self care. When the basic emotional needs are neglected, it can perpetuate a vicious cycle of sentimentality, where you are unduly emotionally attached by other individuals or external states. So, it is time to turn focus on yourself and determine what your basic needs are that can be fulfilled. So, list down the basic needs, eating well, living healthily, sleeping well, uh, enough sleeping for enough time, exercising, scheduling. We also need to look at who are the people in our circle listing down the family, friendship, career, personal hobby, these all are the different domains in which we experience life. Sentimentality happens when we emphasize too much on one or two domains. When we write down these things, when we write down multiple domains which are equally important for our well-being, we realize that which are the domains we are giving disproportionately higher time and which are the domains which we are neglecting. Once we identify those domains which we are neglecting, we need to give more time and energy to that and that naturally result into decrease in sentimentality and dependence. If you look at all these methods, all these methods require our mind to get little disconnected from the ongoing perpetual or cyclical ways of thinking. Because there is cyclicity, there is a perpetualness of the similar thoughts again uh, occurring again and again, we keep experiencing deeper level of anxiety or dependence or sentimentality. Yoga helps us to break that cycle. One very simple method when I am experiencing anxiety or any of these emotional distress very clearly, the best method is to start doing abdominal breathing. We discussed abdominal breathing in the pranayam chapter. So, what happens? We when we breathe through the stomach, you can keep your hand on the navel and focus on that part and then while breathing keep the focus over there, we will naturally start abdominal breathing. In the abdominal breathing, our lungs get more space to expand, as a result we can absorb more oxygen. Our the narrowness of our breathing actually causes emotional distress. By doing abdominal breathing, we are prolonging our breath we are also allowing lungs to absorb more oxygen. Relaxed lungs actually relax uh, heart, relax brain and that result into relaxed thoughts and that result into muscle relaxation. So, a 3 minute abdominal breathing or 5 minute 
uh, be very helpful to come out of any negative episodes of anxiety, sentimentality, dependence, etcetera. We have uh, identified a protocol drawn from the Ministry of Ayush's uh, uh, master protocol, which is being released and which is freely available on the YouTube. We can look at the Ministry of Ayush protocol. Out of that, we have drawn this 25 minute process and lot of research studies are being conducted using this protocol, which starts with unfreezing through reverberation, shaking the body and body tapping for 3 minutes. Uh, which is combination of asanas, rakshasan, padahastasan and trikonasan uh, that can be done for 3 minutes. These are the processes uh, designed which can be carried out in the school, colleges and offices. Uh, so, that is why we have not included sarvangasan or asanas which require uh, uh, supine posture in this protocol. This is just to have some sense of relaxation and regain emotional balance that is followed by pranayam. So, in the in the pranayam section, we recommend uh, four pranayam ujjayi, uh, high frequency yoga breathing which is called kapalabhati, uh, alternate nostril breathing which is anulom vilom and breathing with humming that is called brahmari. So, a specific time and the cycle and the frequency is mentioned here, we can follow that and that can be followed by samatha meditation that is body scan and sitting meditation. The, how it is done? It is done by bringing back focus of attention to breath and uh, then we start the body scan. Body scan can start from the right leg, uh, from the big toe, then the attention can come to the uh, ankle, to knee, to uh, thigh. Then we can shift our attention to the left leg starting from uh, big toe to the smaller toes one by one, then ankle, then the left knee, left thigh, gonad, stomach, chest. Gradually we can take our attention from chest to the shoulder, right shoulder, left shoulder, neck, head, we can take attention to the breath with the attention to the breath, we can take our attention to the stomach and the movements going on in the stomach with breathing. This simple meditation for about 7, 8 minutes, it is a basically a relaxation process completes this 25 minutes protocol. We have found that if this much is done, at least this much is done for even 7 or 8 weeks, we can experience a clear shift in many outcomes like psychological capital, uh, uh, more engaged living, more positive emotions, etcetera. So, uh, in this section, we looked at how negative emotions can be managed through the yogic practices. In the next part, we are going to look at how to inculcate positive emotions and what are the different positive emotions can be inculcated with the yoga based practices, which is the real essence of managing Mano Mai Kosh. Before we talk about the psychological mechanism, which is the main part of the session, uh, we can recall what is the bioscience related findings about managing emotions uh, through yoga and what we have discussed earlier as well, this is a kind of a recap that yoga has positive impact on many happy hormones, uh, which, in, uh, which, is, which means the increased levels of endorph serotonin and dopamine. Endorphin, it improves the response to stress and uh, that is found to be uh, released more with the yogic practices. GABA is the gamma immunobutyric acid and that has a very important role in generating calming effect in our day to day experience. GABA is also found to be in getting secreted more with the yoga based practices. Serotonin very important to decrease anxiety for the restful sleep, dopamine is again a feel good uh, hormone. These both are found to be uh, getting 
more secretion with the uh, yoga based practices. And yoga helps in balancing the release of these biomarkers, be, uh, these specific hormones and that results into a emotional balance. In the next session, we are going to look at what all are the psychological mechanisms through which yoga helps us to gain emotional balance.